I'm Joe Pike. Now, as a YouTuber, my name's a bit funny, a story. The name is Joe PK. Actually, because I'm a teacher, I wanted to make my um, sort of name a bit different. So, so you know, kids wouldn't find me and it, <laughs> it would, uh, wouldn't distract the kids and stuff. And um, they found it anyway. They found my channel. And now I'm stuck with Joe PK. Um, Google won't let me change it. So that's what it is. It's a bit ridiculous. Um, and I guess that could be a really good lesson to start with is if you are starting a YouTube channel, think of a decent name, um, which is which is good and, you know, maybe describes what you're doing or, you know, you're not going to because YouTube doesn't let you change a lot of things it's after you get to a certain level or whatever. It just makes it really hard. So we start with, with a good name. And um, yeah, so basically my channel is just really sharing what I love doing. So, you know, get, getting in the ocean. I love recording and coming back, sort of reliving the experience, doing some editing. I find that really kind of meditation, to be honest, you know, looking through the clips and um, putting a sequence together, trying to tell a story about what's happened um, in the dive and, and sharing. And I think the more you share and the more open you are, that also leads to learning and knowledge and, and getting to know new people. And ultimately, I'd really like to sort of build a community through the channel, maybe start um, YouTube live and stuff. Um, I've still got loads to learn there and, um, and develop. But yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit about me. And yeah, the channel's as simple as that, really. Just, just conveying the love of uh, being out there on the water and, you know, when I can, sharing a bit of what I know and what I've learned so other people don't have to make mistakes because as Max will tell you, um, I make a fair few mistakes. Um, don't I, Max? <laughs> yeah, you did some, you did some. But, um, <laughs> so can, can you tell us what was your first kit to do, uh, to do your video? What's, what the first camera you've been using for your video? What, recently? No, the, the first one, your, your, your print, the, the first ever you use. Uh, so I used the GoPro Hero 3 White um, at the time. Um, it was sort of the cheapest GoPro in that series because um, they sort of went white, silver, black. And um, now I'm using the 7, which is amazing in comparison. Because um, I started filming in 2012. And yeah, that was the Hero 3 then. And now we're at the Hero 8. I'd quite like to get that. At some point if, if I can afford to um, uh, yeah that's where it started so can, can you can you tell us how you build your first video first video um, I stole a version of Premiere Pro from work and um, yeah just put all the clips from my GoPro from uh, the whole season onto my hard drive and then every few months I just, you know, bung together a load of what I considered highlights back then. That's how it started. Um, just because uh, at the time, I think there was just Kev Daly, Nick Collins, a couple of other people kind of doing the same thing. Um, and I, I love watching theirs. So yeah, started off real simple. All right. Okay. Um, so, can you can you give some advice regarding um, how and you're gonna choose your highlights in in a, in a video? What's uh, what, how do you choose a uh, how do you choose uh, the, the 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 future content of your video? Yeah, that's a um, really good question. I think um, I think generally, if 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 you want a video to be successful, you have to know your audience. So you have to, by knowing your audience um, and pitching it at a certain level. So you might want to, if you have a lot of knowledge, do a video on instructional videos, how to's. So that's not necessarily a route I go down. Um, but yeah, the highlight of your video might be, you know, how to, um, how to aim a spear, or you shouldn't aim a spear gun, but how to, you know, how to hit fish with a spear gun or, you know, how to do wishbones or, do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think have a clear, have a clear aim, you know, no, no, a clear subject. 
who you want to reach out to. Is it beginners? Is it advanced? You know, where's your level? Um, I think anything can work as long as you know, if, as long as you have a clear aim, really. Because um, to, to start with, I know I just, I didn't have any aim, you know. I didn't know who the channel was for. I think that's what I'm saying. I think um, there needs to be, you know, who's this channel for? Beginners, advanced, intermediate? Am I giving instructional videos? Am I just giving entertaining videos, showing what's out there? That kind of thing, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, Joe, we have a question. Um, uh, can you talk a little about your uh, workflow? What it means, an example, uh, from a raw clip to a hand production product, uh, or do you work out um, a piece of video? Yeah. So, um, first of all, I think um, what's what's quite valid, and this is actually something Dan Mann taught me recently, is um, how you shoot the clip to start with. So your settings. Now, without getting at all technical, because um, I'm not technical one bit, but what I do know is you want to use the right um, format of clips. So um, there's two kinds, there's NTSC and PAL. So NTSC is your default um, kind of file, um, which is what the GoPro loads up with. And so that's American. Um, and we, we need to start by shooting a clip in PAL, P-A-L. And it is worth um, just doing a bit of research of that. It's very easy to change your, your GoPro settings or camera settings to PAL. And then um, I'm, I'm aware of, if I'm shooting um, footage from a spear gun or underwater, um, my frame rate, uh, and Dan also recommends a frame rate of 50 frames per second. And this means you can, slow your your footage down yeah so, you can have a, you can have a bit uh, a better image when you're going to slow down your footage like uh, when you see the spear going is that right is what what you mean precisely yeah or, or if there's some action which happens quite quickly and you want to prolong it for the viewer so if a seal swims by or a shark you know okay and, but um if you're doing maybe footage to camera so you're you're speaking to a camera or you know, then you might want to use um, 25 frames per second. So a slightly lower frame rate, and then you can get a cinematic look. Um, but you can just leave, stick it in 50 frames. You can just do that, but um, you might lose a bit of quality on, on small cameras if you have higher frame rates. But that's as technical as I'll go, really. Um, but I think, I wish I'd known that sooner because I, I just bunged clips together, which were, a 29.97 NTSC uh, stuff, which is, you know, not, not the right um, frame rate, which means if you're filming artificial light or stuff, you get horrible flickers and it just depends. It just makes a bit more slick if you use those settings. And um, yeah, from there, I don't change any other settings. I just, I just get the clip. I think people get really, really um, concerned about um, quality. So, you know, the standard is 1080p and you can go up to 2K and 4K files. Um, personally, I don't see the point. Um, you end up with huge file sizes, your battery runs down. You've got to ask the question, do you want to get some footage or nothing? You know, it's for the sake of a tiny bit of sharpness. Um, what I do know of YouTube is if you're uploading in um, 4K, um, you can unlock a new quality level um which is fractionally better than 1080 but personally i think for us i don't think it's worth it at this stage um but there, there may be more advanced um you know videographers who, who would um you know disagree with me but you know um yeah but but you know everyone's been seeing probably seeing what you you've been doing uh and um we kind of, I think most of us appreciate what you're doing. So we, we, you know, the quality is there, the, there is the content. Um, so I think if every, everyone is sticking to these basic uh, settings, like you, yeah. you suggest, I think um, they will be able to improve their quality in their footage and also in um, when they editing their footage. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. And then um, 
in terms of you know importing footage and stuff i use a program called sony vegas which is really really good so when i had um premiere pro um yeah that that program had a few bugs and it was also really expensive get rid of it in the end and i got sony vegas which is um yeah relatively much cheaper you can buy it in one go instead of paying like 40 quid a month for adobe which i think is okay. great yeah. But some, some people viewing may already have Premiere Pro, in which case that's obviously brilliant. I mean, it's it's probably the best one. So crack on with that. But Vegas is an option. I, I really rate it. Sony Vegas. Um, and yeah, I, I generally, after a trip, I'll just bring all, import all the footage and just kind of click through it and then condense it down to, to bits I want to keep. But simple as that, really. And then... I guess a video can take, you know, five, six, seven hours to edit easily. So it is a time consuming thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I really enjoy that stage actually. Really enjoy that. Uh, just just to have a, an idea, how many hours of footage you need to create like uh, the, the 10 minute video you're making? Yeah, I'll, I'm still quite, I've got a lot, lot to improve here with kind of, you know, getting and planning the right shots. Um, Dan always talks about shooting to edit. Um, yeah, I do try and do more of the shoot to edit stuff, which means I've got a plan in my mind of what's going to happen in the day, what, where the action's going to be, and try and, you know, get a sequence of clips which aren't just completely random and pointless. So, so you, you're kind of doing like a storyboard before going out of what you're going to be shooting just like a like a guideline um in in my mind if i wrote it down that would be better but i just don't have time um but you know personally i feel i've come a long way from where when um when i started i, I would i would press record on the gopro and record continuously through the dive you know that's, that's <laughs> ridiculous because you just end up with 10 gigabytes of which 9.9 .9 gigabytes is nothing. So now at the start of each dive, you can just flick your GoPro on or, you know, have lots of smaller, I don't know, one, two minute clips, three minutes in your case, Max, for a dive. <laughs> <laughs> and you. then, um, yeah, if you, some people do like gestures at the end of their clip, if it's a good clip and they can quickly see. Um, but I think that's the technical bit is recording your footage underwater well. Um, yeah, because you can end up with just loads of pointless footage if you record the whole time and you can run out of battery. So getting into the habit of um, popping your GoPro on before the dive. Um, I, I know the, the beeps, I can hear whether it's recording or not. So that's yeah. quite a useful feature. Yeah, I, 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 find, I find it tricky to, uh, I, when I started doing some of my video, I was like a, I don't think clicking on my my camera on because I'm so focused into my dive and getting ready for my dives and okay the camera doesn't exist anymore so yeah. it was um yeah it was it's, it's, a, it's a hard point to be all the time constantly thinking okay did I switch on my camera yeah I think it's just something that can become a routine if you will yeah. get used to it and it just becomes part of your ritual if you want it to be you know yeah, 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 yeah um, I agree. I, agree. I know what you mean, though. And but I started using a camera straight away, really, when I started spearfishing. So maybe if you've been diving for, for you know decades, and then you suddenly take a camera, it's old dog, new tricks, isn't it? So exactly, exactly. Good I think it, I think it's worth learning. You know, if we can all share, you know, our experiences and learn from each other, and I think it's the best, a brilliant thing to do because. So much of the year we can't be in the water, you know. Whereas yeah. I'm constantly watching your videos, Corey's videos, Dan's videos, get them up on the TV, and it's yes, yeah, best yeah. entertainment, you know. All right. Um. Okay. Um. What's what kind of um, uh, angle you like, or what's what you would say? Do do I need like two or three cameras? One in the gun, one on the gun, one on my head, one on my hand. Um, how do you decide? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I've got quite a few cameras in the ocean right now, just, you know, 
that, that you know, just probably still filming. Um, but no, what I would suggest is, okay, there's two, two kinds of people, isn't there? Camera on the gun or head camera? Basically, yeah, or even some are on the stick as well, but yeah. And that's when, you, yeah, true. And that's when you're in the water. But yeah, I think in an ideal world, really you want two. You can have one on a selfie stick on, you know, on your float or on the boat, or, you know, if you, even if you're shore diving, it's great to have one you can grab and just explain what you've seen. Um, Dan and, um, and Ryan as well, Ryan E. I don't know if anyone's seen Ryan's um, channel. I really like his videos where he's, uh, you know, he just spits out a load of salt water and grabs his camera and starts talking about what he's seen. Um, but um, yeah, I think personally, I prefer the um, head mount view now because um, you capture a lot of action sort of above the waves without realizing it. And I really like that. You often find really nice clips where you, you've just, you know, caught, I don't know, some really nice scenery as you've been bobbing around or handing a fish to someone or, yeah. So that's what I go for now. I, I didn't use... Are you going all the time for the head mount? Or uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. The other thing is with the gun mount, you, you you're faffing around with um, mounts on the gun, and you do get really nice smooth footage, and, and it is a nice perspective. Okay. I mean, if, I do like both, but currently head mount for me. You, you look around as well; you can capture more information under the water. Whereas otherwise, with the gun mount, it's one fixed point and yeah i find that can be a bit limiting okay you know? yeah I, I i agree uh, yeah i agree with you on the on the fact that the the li is limiting the the mount on the on the gun is limiting but i also find sometimes on some videos that the, the head mount if the people don't think about they have a camera on their head they just like doing that and it just like make you feel sick yeah, true. Um, yeah, I or think. How do you manage that? Sorry. Or, or do you manage that? The fact, or I oh, know I'm not going to turn my head to. Yeah. I I tend to find I just make slow movements all the time. Um, but that's just my nature. I think I'm very slow. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And you can also um, you know, cut out jerky bits and there's. There's no right or wrong answer, really. I just, I think everyone might have their own preference. So I don't think it matters, but that's just the route I've gone down is, is the head uh, camera. Okay. Really. And uh, when, um, when you were doing the gun, uh, the, the camera was at the, at the nozzle or near the handle? Oh, yeah, near the handle. Near the handle, okay. Yeah, and um, being really careful to mount it on the right side um so put, put before you mount it you know hold it to your gun and like do the action and s see which way it, you prefer it because um i find i can't have it on the i think it's the left hand side i need it on the right otherwise i can't aim at a fish um that kind of thing so you're right-handed yeah and so you need it on the outside of your hand yeah i think okay. so otherwise i just can't roll with it Okay. Because I fixed it once on the wrong side and then I got in the water. I just, I was just looking at a camera and <laughs> I, I couldn't work out where, where I was shooting. Yeah. Okay. Um, but also now we're seeing some of your footage uh, from the sky. What, uh, what this new trick? Oh, the drone. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, I mean, just sharing the scenery, you know. Um, the drone is is quite a big purchase, but you can you can get look out on eBay, and you know you can you can get some. I mean, I took a gamble because I'm that kind of guy. Um, I crashed this thing into the house the first time I flew it. You know, they're quite robust now. Um, I've I've crashed it so many times. I've crashed it into a seagull hard you know this thing tumbled out of the air and just righted itself i mean you know you only live once so 
I think with a drone, you've just got to, you know, have a few ciders, find, you know, find one online and just, if, if, you, if you think it's worth it for you, because, yeah, I think some of our scenery, it just adds another, um, you know, depth, adds depth to your video. But, but I, I certainly enjoy it in um, Youngbloods and what he does. Um, okay. I don't quite have, <laughs> we don't quite have his backdrop, of course, um, 40 meter viz and, uh, and, and the other things. <laughs> but, you know, we've all got to have a sort of, you know, goal. Um, but is there Davis in a, um, in a, in a tuna school? Yeah, is it in tuna school? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell, Ed. I'm gonna, yeah. All yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, we got a question. So every time you want to talk to the camera, do you have to take it out of the housing? Oh. I'm trying to think. What do I do there? Oh, so. Yes, you would. <laughs> yes, you would. Even with your uh, finger. <laughs> no. Hang on. The what, underwater housing? Yeah, the underwater housing, yeah. Well, the new ones pick up audio quite good through the housing. Uh, and the housing can be a bit of a windshield. Um, but I, I use the Hero 6 and the Hero 7 together. So I just use the Hero 6 if I want to say anything. And um, no, I use the Hero 7 to talk to and the Hero 6 under the water. Okay, so, you, so basically you got a camera with the diving housing mm. and the other one, which is waterproof all to 10 meters? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with that and a, a housing? Yeah. Okay. Right. And um, the Amazon housings are great. The cheap Amazon housings are really good. I, I smash a housing every few dives when I'm looking for a lobster. So the GoPro one, yeah, it's for 30, 40 quid, I can't, I can't use that. Um, but yeah, um, the Hero 6 and 7, you can get good audio through the underwater housing, actually. It's, you can hear what you're saying. Okay. It's not too bad. All right. Yeah. Uh, we got another question from Adam. Uh, do, you, do you film uh, only on GoPros or do you use any other uh, kind of uh, camera? Um, my wife's got quite a nice... Um, it's the family camera, um, which I sometimes take. It's a Panasonic. Um, okay. I think I've got it here. Yes. Um, so, let's see. It's a DMC FZ1000. Takes really nice um, footage in 4K. And um, I will usually get the occasional um you know to camera a bit with this massive advantages i can put a microphone in and use a um one of these oh, like if, a deported microphone okay if you want if you do want um audio it's it's always windy here so you never hear what you're saying otherwise it'll just be you know a mess so these are these external microphones plug straight into your camera and well worth it um definitely right. the other thing is if you're just using a gopro though the um the thing young bloods taught me is he actually cups it so he gets his hand right round it in the wind so he like holds it like that and then the two mics here you don't get the wind noise it's pretty cool um so that's that's a kind of hack you can use to get around wind noise okay with your gopro like cradle it like, away from the wind okay somebody is asking uh so that's uh, matt is asking uh what would be the best resources to learn how to edit do you have any anything to follow any advice on that um i know you about you a bit uh, you sat you self taught but um, probably you've been watching some video on YouTube or where, wherever, but. Yeah, well, if it's, a, if it's a particular technique, I'll just Google it um, or I'll just YouTube how to do it. Like 
for example, because I use Vegas, um, you know, when I first got the program, I just couldn't work out how to do audio levels. So I just YouTube, you know, Vegas working with audio and there's great tutorials out there um, that can help you with that. Um, in terms of the actual editing, the overall way you do it, um, I'm not, you know, far from an expert. I just, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle to me. I just import all the footage and try and get it in order of what happened and then condense it down to, to what is what I want, you know. Um, but as far as any techniques go, I, I just YouTube them and then I forget them straight away, YouTube them every time. I'm ridiculous like that. Um, but over time you get used to your program and it gets easier. Yeah, when when you get to run your uh, your editing program, you yeah. you starting getting used to the where to click and the yeah mechanics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. We got another question uh, regarding: Do you know? Do you do any uh, color uh, correction, uh, especially for the underwater footage? Or uh, I would add: Do you use any filter for underwater, especially for the green water we have in the UK? Do you have any mm -hmm. filter on it on your camera? Um, I don't. I don't actually use a physical filter. I did try one for a few dives, and I found it really colours the um, the footage. It ends up looking like um, you're in the Mediterranean, and I, for me, I felt that took something away from it because I don't know. It, it's not bright, bright blue water, so it just doesn't really fit for me. Um, maybe it does for some. But as far as color, um, color correction, um, I think the first thing is upping the contrast a bit, which is really simple. Just gives a bit more sharpness, a bit more definition with your contrast. And then um, if it's really green water, in Vegas, there's something called color balance and you've got red, green, blue, RGB, and you can just turn um, green down a bit and hey presto, it works for me um i don't do any more technical color grading than that because first of all i don't have a clue and secondly it's so time consuming it's one of those things you know do you just want to get your video out there and share it or do you want to spend another week going through every clip and getting it the right color i'm i'm not i'm not up to that standard but you know um some guys i'm sure are and that's great yeah Okay. Um, so we don't have a more questions, but Corey is there. Uh, he's been doing quite a, a few videos as well. So I'm going to un unmute you, Corey. And uh, you can, uh, can tell us about what you're looking when you, you sing doing a video. How you doing, guys? Hi, guys. Yeah, so to be honest with you, my videos, you can probably tell I don't put too much uh, emphasis into it I just yeah so uh, with my videos I keep it as simple as possible just so that I can edit it quickly cause, and I can't waste too much time so I've always just made my videos with just a GoPro single GoPro um, I use the Hero 5 that's the one I've been using I'm thinking about getting the new um, the GoPro 8 because of the stabilization but I just use the GoPro and um, I use my phone, the Samsung S9 Plus. Um, so I do my land shots with the, with the phone and then I take the SD card and put it into the phone straight away so there's no, there's no time difference. Like, you know, I don't have to wait for it to upload. All the footage is straight onto the, uh, onto the phone. And then I use, um, uh, what's it called? Power director, everything's on there straight away. And then when I want to put music over it, I go on YouTube and then uh, copy the uh, copy the URL and then paste it into a YouTube converter. So then I have the music. So I can use that. I just use any any music that I want for the footage. And for me, when I put videos together, I try and I put it more, because I'm obviously rubbish at talking in front of the camera, I try and just do it more off the music and off the, um, 
off the feelings of the dive. Um, and I use quite a lot of slow-mo shots. So Joe was saying about um, 30 or 50 frames per second. I put it on maximum. So mine are like 120 frames per second. Um, but I can only film in 1080p with that, or 1080. So um, my, I can get some really cool super slow-mo shots. And if you put it to music right, it can look really good. I'm, like I say, I, I don't put any, I don't put much time or effort into it. I use bog standard stuff to put it together. And when I edit mine, it takes me an hour or two, sometimes a bit longer, but I just try and chuck the video up there. And it's a good time capsule for me to look back on. Um, my friends like watching them, but for me, like I put a lot of unnecessary footage into there. Um, because it's great for me to look back on where I'm diving and if it's a wreck I want to remember exactly which bits of the wreck are where and um, you know where the fish are going to be sitting so again it boils down to what Joe was saying who is your audience and for me quite a lot of it is for me um, another thing that uh, you're talking about if you do film in 4k Obviously, you can't have the frames per second as high, but if you do film in 4K, say like we've got the scene here, you can crop it. So then you can use the video of just the bit in the corner and it will keep it looking really crisp. That's why I lose a lot of my, um, a lot of my megapixels if I zoom into something because I only film in 1080. So if you zoom in on 4K, it'll still keep the quality of a little picture in the corner. So if you're doing a wide shot, that's a good thing to take into consideration. Um, yeah, but like I say, it's all about your style of filming, your style of footage. Joe Pike's damn man, amazing to watch because they're so well spoken in front of the camera. They're really well, um, uh, you know, they get their points across quite direct, they, it's informative. Um, but for me, um, with my style, I just keep it quite simple. I just chuck it together and I put together like, uh, look, kind of like the young bloods. He's got some cinematic stuff. And Corey, do, do you don't have any problem of, um, uh, or you call that copyright? Yeah, yeah, but that does does when you post the video. That do you have any? Uh, I, I'm saying because I had the problem. Uh, I used the vid uh, music on some some of my video. I used on previous video as well, and suddenly I had a message saying, "Oh, that uh, isn't the copyrights." When yeah. it was on the platform, did you had an, did you ever encounter that kind of thing? I have, I have done in the past, but um, there is ways of doing it. If you notice in my videos, I put some uh, like liquid drum and bass or just, they're remixes. So you can kind of get, with the music I use, they're remixes. So when, you can get caught, not caught, but you can get, uh, they, they can find it um, and take it off. But if you use remixes, like if you find a tune that you like, um, type it in on YouTube and then type in remix of the song and then you can find different versions of it and sometimes there's better there's better music out there that are remixed it depends like I say my, my videos are Mickey Mouse compared to like Joe puts a lot of thought and um, a lot of time into them and a lot of personality same as Dan Man with me I just want to chuck it up you know, like, I'll have an idea in my mind. I do have some cool ideas that I think of before I go on a dive. Okay. Of, like, you know, um, if I'm out walking, and this is why I do a lot of stuff on the phone, I'll see something like a bird, one of my videos, a bird running across the table, and the birds are different. So I just recorded it. So I have a cum accumulation of footage of cool stuff that I'll see randomly. And then I'll just chuck it into the video, um, or yeah. like we we got uh, we got some question um, that is, that's towards Joe. 
everyone is asking now yeah we've been talking about about the music and all of that where do you source and uh you source your your music or mm. your soundtrack um yeah so i used to use um there's a youtube channel called um there's two um there's one called no copyright sound ncs and it's got loads of drum and bass um upbeat euphoric music it's quite it's quite good um and it's all copyright free okay and there's also one called um um free to use music free to use music um i now use epidemic sound though which is um i think it's seven pounds a month or eight pounds a month um for a small channel which is where my channel comes uh, into um and um that's really good massive library oh, so you got, large, you got access to a large library or song yeah and sound effects as well okay so you could get like fishes swimming <laughs> switching through the water i see okay okay just want to quickly say um cory said something i absolutely loved there he said um can you hear me all right yeah yeah go for it he said um he makes videos for himself kind of thing because because he loves just doing that yeah think, what, what he was saying is that he, he, he liked doing his video uh it's like uh, having a memory book yeah so something can come back on it and they are gonna remind him uh, that yeah. day out at sea with us or whatever uh this uh adventure he's having at the moment in dubai or but yeah. for maybe in 10 years or 20 years time so something yeah. to come back to yeah i just think it's really just a great way to be you know i just wanted to put that out there you know i don't think you need to make a video because you know you you think you're gonna be some i don't know make money from it or something you know i think it has to be for those kinds of reasons in our niche i mean you know go go and make videos of uh you know i don't know there's plenty of things to, to do on youtube to make money is what i'm saying I, I don't think we're in that niche you know it's umbrellas in the desert sort of thing you know uk spear fishing <laughs> where the water's green and uh it's mainly gray skies um yes yeah, so i just like that comment from corey there it's yeah nice. uh Yes, like Luke is asking, he's saying, did you uh, do anything special to get this 2.6 million views on your giant lobster? Did I do anything what, sorry? Special. Special? To, to get that, uh, that number of views on your giant lobster video. No. Um, it's the, I remember putting that video online and this was before I knew anything about... Um, you know how to get views at all um so it doesn't even have a lobster in the thumbnail it's just like some kelp and um i saw it got maybe five thousand views after six months and then i came i came back to it um like a year later and it had like 1.3 million views i could i it just popped up just popped up there so i can go back over the analytics now and um it happened in literally two weeks. YouTube has this thing called browse feature, which is basically the home page. And um, sometimes it will just pick a video and put it on there, put it on there for people. And um, it gives videos impressions. So it can take a video, but this is a good point, you know, the power of YouTube, it can take a video and give it 50 million impressions in, in a few days, which just means, you know, 50 million people will see it just like that. And um, that's what it'll be doing for people like Youngbloods, you know. Um, he's making good revenue for the company, so they'll just splash his videos on everyone's browse feature. And I've had um, maybe three videos that have gone to browse feature. The um, Big Lobster, the Spider Crab video. Um, the Spider Crab video is at about one million views now. One and a half. I'll, I'll have a quick look because um, YouTube tells me in, in the analytics. So I, I can show you the app if you want um and that one um yeah just it's amazing the volume of traffic you can get on youtube if, if you want to play your cards right but yeah most videos aren't in that um 
you know category at all most videos just trick you know trickle about in into suggestive occasionally and um yeah this one here don't know if anyone's seen that one the um it's it's, it's all because the thumbnail is um kind of clickbaity i just did an experiment with the thumbnail basically and i uh, put the shove the crab on my barbecue and that one's that one's at 1.7 million views Basically, I think the thumbnail is a massive thing if you want to get views, definitely. Okay. But I have no idea with the lobster, other lobster video. I don't, I don't know why that one was so successful. I have, I have a question. Oh, because I think uh, on your video, you, you kind of have uh, a lot of uh, positive people. Mm -hmm. uh, but are you dealing with people like a bit uh, uh, hateful? Or... Yeah. Well, you know, I think controversy is brilliant for YouTube. Um, I think actually that's why the lobster video is so successful is because everyone hated me. Um, at the time, I was really inexperienced, you know, I put my hands up. I, I wasn't an expert and I caught a lobster, you know, I caught a lobster and brought it home. And my wife was basically shouting at me saying, what are you doing with that in the kitchen? There's no way we can cook that thing. It's like, and it's just crawling around on the tables. And I was like, well, what do I do? You know, I actually called the aquarium. They came and picked it up, took it away. And that was the end of the story. But yeah, I mean, you have to be quite thick skinned. I had death threats from that video because, um, yeah, because I took that lobster and I, I should have returned it, etc. I mean, probably, probably I should have, you know, um, but you, you live and learn, you know, I, at the time I just, I thought, yeah, that's cool. That's a big lobster. Um, I want to eat it, but you know, I didn't realize I put I put one claw on the scales at home. I put one claw on the scales, and it was four kilos. And one thought, claw. One claw. Yeah. <laughs> I said to the aquarium guy, I said, "Look, can you weigh this when um when you get it there?" And he's, he messaged me back the next day. He said, "Your lobster is coming at over seven kilos." I was like, "Wow, you know, I was going to eat it, but." I don't know. Yeah. Probably, probably would have been a bit tough. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no, just, uh, just, I was just thinking about that because I know, you know, uh, social media is, uh, can be a bit rough sometimes. Um, just, just there's just there's always going to be people that hate you. Um, I've just got used to it now. Like, I wake up with comments on my videos just saying, you know, the worst things in, in the world. And now I just literally crack up. Like, okay. Um, I, I, I've changed my mindset because, you know, for every one person that dislikes it, a few people will like it. So I think it's worth it, you know? Yeah, if yeah. most people dislike it, then yeah, I retire, but, you know. <laughs> Still, uh, Luke uh, got a question. Is, uh, do you do something, any spe anything special to uh, promote your video once you pu publish them? Um. I need to I need to work out how Instagram works desperately. Um, I need to remember to share them on Facebook. On um, Spearfishing Buddies is really good, um, and I, I don't know why I always forget that. Um, but that really helps definitely because they're really big um, pages now, like fa thousands of people, and that it's a great way of boosting your video. I think it's the first 24 hours for your video is critical for whether or not it gets traction. Um, yeah. So yeah, work out how Instagram works. That's one of my jobs. I still haven't got around to it, but you can do all sorts on there. Categories and regular uploading and stuff is really important. Um, other than that, just if you want, if you want to be viewed, you need a, a decent thumbnail. Um, so the, the thumbnail is a, is a one of the trick. And um, yeah. what about the timing? When do you post a video? Oh, right, yeah. Well, for me, actually, um, like 75% of viewers are American. So when I remember, I schedule it for 4 a.m. because that's when I get most people in America watching it. And um, But other than that, I don't think it matters hugely, you know. It's just post the video, post the damn video. I faff around for so long. Um, I think it's just 
the golden rule is just the content is king, you know, post it. Okay. Well, ap apparently someone, uh, uh, it's called Ryan and E just upload a video. <laughs> yes, in the river. <laughs> that should be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thank you very much for joining. Any again. questions, by the way, um, Facebook message me or so I can try and help or I can always ask Dan or other people as well if there's anything else. Yeah, do not hesitate eh, to, contact, uh, to contact us. Um, well, for video, we'll be more um, more Joe uh, than me, but uh, do not hesitate any question. Uh, any any field as well you want us to go, like uh, last last uh, session was about uh, using a map and uh, all, all this stuff. Um, if you have uh, something you want to work on, uh, we can, uh, we can um, work on that and uh, do a subject uh, around that. Um, so, so yeah, so do not hesitate to send a message uh, through the Facebook, the Instagram, or even the channel, but uh, probably more uh, the Facebook page. Do not hesitate. Uh, have a good uh, evening, guys. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Cheers. Cheers, guys. <laughs>